to get started and have some like really nice existing conditions drawings that eventually turn into some really you know solid proposed conditions drawings i want to get these buttoned up and to do that i use the condoc 2d scrapbook scaled architectural objects like doors windows and walls furniture fixtures you got everything you need to build a precise scaled plan in layout. So let me show you how quickly you can trace over these uh, kind of rougher drawings that we created using our flex drawing set and turn them into some really nice existing conditions drawings. And these are the drawings that I'm willing to send to my client. Inside of layout, once again, we're gonna work on this main level and let's add a layer. Let's go to our layers, click the plus sign, and I'm gonna make a layer called backgrounds. So the backgrounds will go below the drawings and backgrounds will eventually be turned off. So we're gonna move to layer background. So then we have the ability to turn those backgrounds on and off. I'm gonna bounce over here just to be sure, move to layer backgrounds. Let's go to our scrapbooks dialog and hit that drop down and head over to our Conduct 2D scrapbook. So like I said, this is a collection of scaled objects in the layout that you can use to build out your 2D drawings. So probably the first thing I would do is select a wall and I'll just drop it close to that corner up there, hit the space bar for my select tool and then zoom in a bit. When I select that wall, notice that it is a scaled drawing. So it's a group that has a scale assigned to it. And a scaled drawing in layout, what that means is when I'm out here, out in the main level of layout, you can see that like as I draw, this is like paper space kind of, yeah, you know, that's maybe that's one way to think about it. So you can see I'm drawing a line at like 30, 45, 60 force, okay? But if I double click in here and I start drawing a line, notice that now this is like, you know, two feet. So I'm drawing drafting inside a layout at a scale. This is like a really overlooked feature. So I'm just gonna scoot this guy over here and snap it you know, to that corner. I'm gonna stretch it and make sure that we're snapped to, there we go. And I'll stretch it and snap it here as well. So that is kind of the first step of creating these walls. So I'm gonna double click and select this and I'm gonna go to my shape style and click on this fill swatch. And then I wanna knock my opacity down to like 50. And that way I can kind of see what I'm working on. Now watch this. I'm going to make a copy of this over here like that. And then I'm just going to stretch it like that. There are two schools of thought here. Like if I just draw a line and measure this and take a look down low, you can see that we're like at three feet, 10 inches. All right. So the question is like, how perfect is that canvas scan? You know, like what happens if these existing windows, some of them are three, six, and some are three, eight. That does tend to happen, but it's really no big deal because this is an existing conditions model. If we were doing something very specific with those windows, then you'd want to go in and like really measure them and be sure that that is perfect. But I can tell you that like, we're not doing anything with those windows. They're not going to like blow those out or those are not critical to the overall design. They're really close. It's really accurate. It doesn't need to be absolute perfection. Question here is whether I type in specific dimensions in layout or if I just kind of stretch and snap to the plan. I think I'm gonna go with the more precise route. That tends to be my default uh, stance on these matters is uh, when in doubt, err on the side of precision. Let's do that. We're gonna work through this drawing in layout and we're gonna type in specific dimensions so that everything has got like nice clean round numbers. Let's get to it. I feel like I didn't quite get a clean snap. Yeah, there we go. Let's stretch these down like that. So I might just scoot this over here and you can see that bottom of my screen, our measurements dialog, I can just move this and hold shift. And if I do snap there, you can see it's three foot 10. All right, so I'll just type in 46 enter. So now as I'm working through here, making sure that you're getting all those clean snaps and then you can make a copy. There's a couple different ways to make a copy of a wall. On that last copy, it was was difficult for me to snap it and really be confident that that was a perfect snap. So watch this. I'm going to hit undo and I'm just going to hit control and scale and copy that at the same time. That way I know that these two shapes are perfectly lined up and then I can kind of snap it there and then I'm going to move it and snap and I'm looking down at the bottom. See it says three foot ten. So I'll just type 46 enter. So we're good there. So those are some techniques for working here. Like if I hold control I can kind of fold it inside out 
out and then I can move it over here and look down low. You can see that's two foot six. So I'll just type in 30 enter and make sure that I'm getting those nice, clean, perfect round numbers for my openings. So that one I wasn't paying attention. I'm gonna hold shift and then you can see, see this is a good example. It's like I'm having a hard time getting that clean snap at three foot 10 and it's reading five sixteenths, all right? So I'm gonna say 46 enter. And now I get a window that's the same distance there. So we'll just keep stretching around. This is gonna be a door and I'll just kind of like use a random length, hold shift as I move it, check in my measurements dialog box, two foot eight, so we'll call it 32, snap this, and then I'm gonna turn the corner. So, you know, I can just make a copy of this. I can rotate it by 90 and then I can set it back in place. I'll stretch this down. Oh, this is actually a door to the garage. Hold control and shift at the same time. Get it close, two foot eight and a half. So two foot eight and a half, sounds suspect. I'm going to call it 32. So that's kind of what I'm getting at with this technique is, you know, do you want your doors to show up as two foot eight and a half? Or do you want to kind of make sure that they're all realistic and kind of coming out to those clean 32 inches? Same drill here. I'll just make a copy of this and then we're going to scoot it down and snap. Ah. I wasn't paying attention again. So that's gonna be a clean 14 enter. And we can stretch this guy down and then same drill, hold control, and then scoot it down. You know, just kind of keep it an eye, 14 enter, and then drag this up. The SketchUp 3D Summit is a once in a lifetime opportunity to elevate your design skills, connect with the best, and have a blast doing it. We're talking live mind-blowing presentations from six of the top SketchUp experts, authors, and extension developers. First class workshops by day, unforgettable networking events by night. Gear up for your journey to the peak of your professional SketchUp workflow. Join me at the SketchUp 3D Summit in Denver this summer. Click the link in the description to learn more and grab your seat today. I'll see you there. Again, we're going to turn the corner. You know, you can you can copy and rotate at the same time. So if you drag your precise move grip, I select this object, this wall, and drag the left side of the precise move grip down, hold control, and then click and drag on the right side of the precise move grip. I can rotate and make a copy simultaneously. All right, we'll snap over to here, and then I'm going to hold control, get close, 10 foot 6. All right, so 126, enter. And then we'll stretch this into place. Again, hold control and then move it, paying attention, three foot, all right? So 36, enter, that's gonna be our front door. Snap there. I still have that precise move grip in the position where I need it. So that's kind of handy. We'll bring it all the way down like that. And then this precise move grip, I'm gonna put it over on that bottom right corner and then do another rotate and copy. Look at this, I'm on a roll. Make another copy of getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna make a copy like this and then I'm gonna move it and hold shift, check my dimension, where to clean five feet, enter. Stretch it to the end, hold control, kind of turn it inside out and then move it. Four foot two, I'll just type 50, enter. So I'm telling you, if you just just practice this technique, you get really fast at it. And I'm telling you, these drawings are going to be really so much cleaner, look so much better than just doing kind of the quick and dirty Condoc Flex. I keep getting ahead of myself here. I'm going to hold control, turn inside out, and then do a move like that. So four foot two, that's going to be 50 enter. And then I'll stretch that into place, hold control, and then scoot that. That's going to be 30 inches. Stretch this one and snap it, hold control, turn it inside out, move it. And that's going to be clean 60 inches. I'll back out, kind of do a zoom extents here. And as we're going, turn your backgrounds off. And that just gives you an idea of like how much work we have to go. All right, so, so far so good. I mean, we're like half an hour in on, you know, drafting and getting this thing set up and things are looking pretty good. So I've got my exterior walls all taken care of. And now what we need to do is set up our interior walls using the exact same techniques. So let's work through our interior walls. I'm just gonna be you know, copying and, and rotating and stretching in the same way to trace all of my interior walls. Let's get to it. All right, so let's start working on our interior wall. So I'm gonna double click in and you know, there's no real right or wrong way to, to get started on this. Um, it's really just start chipping away. So I'm gonna copy that. Keep in mind that we are working within this uh, scaled, scaled drawing inside of layout. Technically you could create a separate group and a separate scaled drawing for your interior walls, but I mean, we're just gonna kind of hatch them all black. So I think we're in good shape here. I'll make a copy of this and snap there and then stretch that 
that in and I'm going to stretch this down like that and then go about this the exact same way. Kind of turn it inside out while holding control to make a copy. Then I'm going to do a move and double check like three foot 10. We're gonna call that a clean 46 enter. We can stretch it like that. And I mean, you know, I get a clean snap there. As I move this three foot 10, I got a clean snap there. I just don't know. I, I don't always trust that I'm getting that perfect snap. I do like to just type in the precise measurement. For here, I'm gonna set my precise move grip like on that endpoint, hold control and make a copy at 90. And then I'll stretch those into place and copy this down and that looks good. And then this guy, we can copy it up like that. And this is kind of a thicker wall. And I tend to just trust whatever canvas came up with. Again, I'm gonna hold control to make that copy, slide it across and I wasn't paying attention. I think the reason I do that, because in SketchUp when you do a move, the dimension lingers. In layout, it doesn't. So I gotta type in 20, enter. Stretch this, hold control, move it across, double check, that's gonna be 30. Stretch this across, copy this guy, and then slide that across. That's gonna be 20. And so I'm just kind of working across, you know, when you get on a roll, move that, that's gonna be 30. You know, you just kind of like run these walls out. Using the pieces you've got, you can make a copy of this guy here. We can stretch that all the way down, and then perhaps I'll make a copy of it like that and then stretch this guy up here and then just start working back down. Hold control, same deal, hold shift like that. Check my measurement, call it 46, enter. Snap it to the opening, make a copy, stretch it down. That's gonna be another clean, 46, enter. And then I'll bring this one back up like that. And I can just make a copy of this guy. I wouldn't be surprised if those do line up, but that's cool, like this, and then make another copy down there. So we got our bedrooms all laid out. Uh, let's just keep chipping away. I'll grab one of these horizontal walls like this. This is kind of an interesting function of layout. It's like when I zoom in, you know, I get like all these different grips and there's this like level of zoom right here at like 450% where it's kind of hard to get my left and right grips. I gotta just zoom out just a little further. And then, you know, like around 240%, I get that like easy to grab left grip. So sometimes if you're not seeing the grip that you want, do a little bit of zoom in either in or out and you'll see them show up. So I'll just start running up this wall. And again, I want to hold control, turn it inside out, move it, double check, clean three feet, and then we'll stretch this back into place. This guy here, you know, maybe I'll snap. When you select an entity in layout and then put the precise move grip somewhere, that precise move grip, it's kind of like a more powerful snap because now it's like, I'm going to get like a nice feeling on that snap. Uh, I don't know how to explain it. If I don't have that precise move grip anywhere, you get the snaps, but it's not quite as like controlled. Whereas if I put that precise move grip where I want to snap, like bam, there it is. That precise move grip is used for a lot. Make a copy, scoot it up here. We're going to call that 26 enter. Kind of an awkward size, but uh, whatever. Let me undo that. Stretch that. Make a copy of this guy. So precise move grip goes into place. And then I hold control and copy it at 90. This actually, I think, is going to go more here. See, that's where that precise move grip, I need it like on that edge to get that snap. It doesn't do exactly that. We cut high. We could go back over here and look at the model real quick and just, you know, I'll hide the, the ceiling here. And yeah, here's our staircase. We kind of cut high. That's the line that we're seeing over here. So we're not gonna trace that. This wall comes out here. Yeah, so this, we'll, we'll just do something like this. And then this guy can snap to there. So this is like the pantry. Here's a funny little uh, trick. All right, look, I forgot. I didn't copy this, I moved it. No big deal. but like watch this i'm gonna copy these and hit Control z and back this up and then hit Control v so that's like a seemingly weird little tip but that trick tends to come into play more often than you realize where you need to kind of get back to something but you've already done work well you can kind of copy the work you did undo it and then just paste it back in i'm having a hard time remembering like exactly all the reasons that tends to come up but i know that i use that little trick a lot let's see if it comes up again as we keep working 
All right, so now we just need a few more interior walls and we will be in great shape. So make a copy of this and then we can also rotate it down like, and then stretch it across, hold control and then stretch it or move it over there by 30. And then we'll kind of complete that. We'll stretch this guy. Um, you know, maybe I'll just make a copy of it first before I do anything. Mention there, we'll make a copy of this and then scoot it straight down, paying attention to our distance of 46 and then we'll snap up here and then maybe I'll just make a copy of this guy and snap it there. You can see that little dot gives you the indicator of like which inference you're actually snapping to. Uh, I'm guessing there used to be a door here. Either that or we got something kind of funny in the hallway. Let's go look. You know, so we can just kind of zoom over here. That's not anything. That's going to be this little fella here. So we can get rid of that. Let's just make a copy and then scoot it up this way. We're going to call that 46 and then I'll scale this and we've got this guy ready to rock so we can scale that and then let's just finish off this bathroom and then we can move on to our next step here. Here I want to be careful not to snap to the vanity. I want to you know snap to that wall and sometimes you just got to like stretch it far and then bring it back. I would be weary about like using that endpoint, although I'm pretty confident about that one. I'd kind of like look for this edge over here as my inference just so that I'm not like getting tangled up in all these other lines uh, with the vanity. Then we'll make a copy of this this. Yeah, kind of goof that up. That's okay. Kind of like what I was saying here, we're going to set our precise move grip in the top left corner. And then that gives like a stronger preference towards that point. Hold control, move it. As I move down, I can see this is going to be like 26. So I'll type in a clean 26 and then pull this guy back into place. So I'll just kind of zoom out a little bit and just take a look around. As mentioned before, we can turn off our backgrounds. That gives us an indication of what are we looking at? like how much more work do we have to do? So I can see, you know, we need to still get in all of our doors and windows and some of these fixtures. It's going to go fast though. We've got our walls complete. So let's just double click in, select all, control A. That's only going to select all within this group. My fill swatch is still active. When I choose a new color like this black, it's just going to dial that up to a solid black. You know, you could choose to do that now or later, whenever, but uh, for now, I think that we're, we're finished with our walls. So we are done with the level one walls, but far from done with the plan. Let's keep this thing going. Follow me to this video to see how I add scaled door and window objects from the Conduct 2D scrapbook. Scaled scrapbooks has to be the most overlooked feature in layout. Or if you want to spin the wheel of Brightman tips and tricks, check out our latest upload here. I'm always barking about something to do with SketchUp, Layout, and our Conduct Tools workflow. Be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment before you leave. I'll see you soon.